I'm Mark Dawson from The Self-Publishing Show, and this is Self-Publishing Spotlight, where we shine a light on the indie authors who are changing the world of publishing one book at a time. Hello, and welcome to The Self-Publishing Spotlight. We meet indie authors at all stages of their careers and ask them a series of five questions. Five questions about their process, their mistakes, and their successes. Five answers that will help you level up your own author career. My name's Tom Ashford, and I'm part of The Self-Publishing Formula. Don't forget that you can get your self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. This week's guest is Jim Hesket, a thriller writer. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing great, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, so I had a look on your website, and obviously there's a lot of thriller books there. I'm not sure how many you've actually um, written in total, but it's quite quite substantial from what I could see. I'm not sure either, but the, yeah, there are a lot. Is it mostly um, thriller books, or do you write in other genres as well? Um, yeah, I've I've written some other genres that are moved to a pen name and uh, mysteries. Yeah, I, I I dabbled all over when I, especially when I first started. Yeah, and and um, where in the states are you from? I am in Colorado, right outside of Denver. Very nice. All right, well, let's jump straight into the questions. Um, question number one is the big one: Why do you write? Well, the main answer I think is the my mortgage and my car payment. Um, <laughs> I've I've always been a storyteller. Um, when I was when I was very young, you know, I was eight or nine years old in school, and uh, or younger than that actually, and go out to recess with my friends, and everybody would have their little stories that they wanted to play at recess. You know, on on Monday we would do one friend who was into cops and robbers, so we would play cops and robbers. Then on Tuesday. A different friend was into Knights and Dragons, so we would play that. Then on Wednesday, when it was my turn to direct the playtime, uh, my playtime episodes always had a narrative arc to them, which I don't think most most of the other kids, you know, didn't play like that. But in my my playtime stories had a beginning, middle, and end. Nice. Um, so I've, I always wanted to be a storyteller, and as an adult, I kind of realized I'm not really suited to do anything else. Yeah, fair <laughs> you know, enough. I've, I've had lots of different careers, which I'm, I'm grateful for because it gives me great ammunition as a writer to have you know, done all kinds of different things and had lots of life experiences. But really, storytelling is really the only thing I'm suited to do, so I guess I kind of have to do it. Yeah, okay. And um, so in terms of your publishing history, are you uh, self-published or traditional or hybrid? Uh, I am I am hybrid. I'm mostly self-published. I have one book through an Amazon imprint in uh, um, the beginning of 2018. Uh, I had a book that won Kindle Scout. It was actually the second to last or third to last book that Kindle Scout published before they shut that down. So I got in just in the nick of time. So you have one book with an Amazon imprint and then the rest are self-published. Okay, and when, when did you start self-publishing? Uh, 2015, I think. Okay. Yeah, early 2015. Okay. Um, well, question two, I know there's a lot of questions within each question. Uh, question two is how do you write? So are you more of a um, like an outliner or do you sort of just wing it as you go along? Well, usually I write with a big deadline looming over my head. Um, that's really the only way that I can get anything done is to impose deadlines on myself that that feel ominous and and uh, don't help my stress levels, but they make me they certainly make me uh, push the words out the door. But I'm I'm primarily um, primarily an outliner, um, but I do like to sort of live. A little bit in the middle. I mean, I I guess I, I write in what I call loose beats, where I I know how a scene is going to end up. I know the beginning and the end of the scene, and sometimes, but I allow myself the freedom to move around in the middle. Like I don't know where a scene is going to be set, or I don't know how they're going to go about getting it. So I I, I always know where the story is going to go. So I don't ever, I'm not ever in jeopardy of writing myself into a corner. But I do allow myself some freedom to experience that joy of discovery, you know, because it, it can't be it can't be all paint by numbers or else there's no fun to it. But yeah. also, I don't want to get into a position where I might have to waste words and think, oh, gosh, this story isn't working and it went off the rails here or there. So I'd hate to waste words. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, and do you have a particular time and place that you like to write? 
Um, I'm usually freshest in the morning, um, not very early because I have a young child. So often I get up before I want to uh, because of him. Um, but like mid to late morning is when I'm freshest, I think, and when I'm most creative. But, you know, as as the um, father of a young child, sometimes I don't always have that luxury. So sometimes I just have to get the words in when I can. Um, and I'm I'm really okay with writing crappy words because I know I can always go back and fix them or improve them later. Yeah. And do you use um, Scrivener and Vellum and what what sort of software do you use? Yeah, mostly Scrivener. Um, I've been a Scrivener convert for about three or four years now, and you know I was in Word before that, but Scrivener is. Scrivener is a godsend. It does so many amazing things. And, I, you know, I don't even use half of what it can do, but the half that I do know how to do makes writing so much easier just to be able to drag and drop scenes and keep track of word counts and all that stuff. And so, yeah, I do my um, uh, first drafting in Scrivener. Then I do some stuff in Google Docs if I'm collaborating. Um, and usually everything ends up in Vellum as the last place that it goes before publication so I can make it look pretty. Cool. Okay. And, uh, question number three, are you a full-time author? If you are, how did you get there? And if you aren't, what steps are you taking to make it happen? So I guess the answer to that is, yeah, I'm sort of a full-time author. I guess it depends on how you define it. If you define it by the lack of a day job, then yes, I do not have a day job. Um, nice. Do you define it as do do I make enough money to pay the bills? Do I do I have a, a lack of side hustles? Um, I mean, I'm an author, I'm a podcaster, I do contract work, so yes, I don't have a day job. Um, prime most of my income is not actually from writing, or I mean, I don't know. That's it. It depends, you know, from month to month. But um, yeah, I haven't had a regular day job since last year, so I'm mostly just focused on writing and all the other side hustles. So I don't know if that exactly answers your question, Tom, but that may be about as good as I can get. I think it's a good answer. <laughs> I think I think it all works out the same, doesn't it? I think it counts. If you're uh, if you're doing yeah. what you want to do, when you want to do it, then uh, that I think that counts as a, you know, being full-time. That's true. I can work in my pajamas <laughs> and house shoes if I feel like it, and exactly. so that's pretty nice. Okay, well, question number four is, what mistakes do you think you've made and what have you got right? I have made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I think we all have. Um, I think the, the the main mistake that I've made in my author career was not treating it like a business from the very start. Um, you know, in the beginning, I wrote across multiple genres. You know, the first thing I published was a mystery. Then I published a, um, a post-apocalyptic trilogy. Then I published a thriller trilogy. And I did all that before I even really got into writing a, a series, which, you know, I know now you like Chris Fox calls the flagship series. You got to have a long series because that's how you really make money. So it was really yeah. a couple of years before I even started doing that. Um, so writing cross genre, picking bad titles for my books because um, I didn't understand. I understand now that book covers and book titles are a, are a business decision, not an artistic one. But like one of my early books, um, was a thriller and I named it Sallow City, S-A-L-L-O-W, right. because it was a, I thought it was very clever because it was a, a comment on, the book was set in Flint, Michigan. And so I was, I was trying to be clever about, with a name about the city, but the thing is readers didn't get it and they would call it Shallow City or Swallow City. And so it was just very confusing. And I later renamed that book to something much more to market, but I didn't understand then that being clever isn't always the right way <laughs> to reach people. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that story sounds very familiar to me. <laughs> I haven't started my flagship series yet. I've got a new, like two different trilogies and three standalones, all in different genres as well. Uh, but yeah, and I haven't actually started my flagship. So what's your flagship? Have you got a flagship series now? Um, yeah, I have, a, I have a couple of long running series. You know, I've, I had a couple of trilogies and stuff like that that are that are finished. But I do have a couple of long running series. One is currently at five books and the other one is at eight books. Nice. Um, <clears throat> but to, to answer the other part of your question, what I got right was I think that early on and this is more accidental than a, than a business decision was that I, I, I focused on character in the stories because I, I think I, as a lifelong reader, I understand that that's what readers are looking for. You know, when I get, when I get emails from readers um, 
saying nice things about my books. They don't, they don't email me to say, Hey, that was an amazing car chase in that book, you know, because every thriller book has a, has a car chase. So people that's not going to stand out to people and make them love the book. They, they love the people who love my books do so because of the characters. So when they send me an email to say, Hey, I like this book, they always mention the character, you know, like, Oh, I love Micah Reed or I love Lane Parrish. And so it's, it's a lot less about the plot and a lot more about the character. And that's what hooks people. Okay, great. Okay, and the fifth and final question is, what's your final piece of advice for authors starting out in indie publishing? Well, you know, I uh, like I just mentioned, uh, treat it like a business. You know, when I really started out, I was mostly focused on backlist and and producing a lot of books really fast. And it's great now, you know, that I'm I'm uh, I'm like four years into my publishing career and I have 20 something books. So it's great that I have a sizable backlist that I can use to promote, you know, I can have more opportunities to give books away for free as lead magnets and stuff like that. But if I could go back in time, so this is my advice to, to new indie authors out there is that if I could go back in time, I would have focused just as much on learning how to write to market um, and learning ads from the start because I didn't really treat my writing career like a business until really probably earlier this year or late last year. You know, like I actually got, um, I, I spent time to study the tropes in the genre, spent time to study what readers are looking for. And I, you know, started taking ads seriously and I took um, Mark's Ads for Authors course. And so, I didn't really embrace that side of the business um, until recently. And I think, you know, my first few years of publishing show that, you know, I wrote a lot, but I wasn't selling a lot until I really viewed it as, as a whole thing and not just an artistic endeavor where I had to do these businessy things because I had to. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So uh, basically treat it like a business from the start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be my, my my um uncomfortable piece of advice because you know most of us authors are creatives most of us are not naturally business people and so that's probably not what you want to hear when you're first starting out but it's the best piece of advice i think i could give is you know look at the whole business the art the the production the business the the admin the managing the networking part of it you have to view it holistically i guess is the word i'm looking for there if you want to be able to succeed in this business yeah awesome Okay, well, that's that's all five questions up. Uh, there's a little secret as well, actually. Uh, you were actually the very first person to submit an application for the podcast. So congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, I guess I just I saw it on Facebook and jumped on it and thought I would like to do that. Yeah, you got in quick. All right, well, thanks so much for having me, Tom. This has been great. That's it for this week's self-publishing spotlight. Don't forget that you can get your free self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. And if you want to appear as a guest on this show, send us brief details about yourself and your writing at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash spotlight dash guest. I'm Tom Ashford, and I'll see you again next week. <laughs>